So in this demo, we would be working on deployment of Apache Uzi on Ubuntu 15.04 server. That's a 64-bit single node cluster, which is already running Apache Hadoop as a single node cluster on an Azure Linux VM. And so the entire VM is running on cloud on Microsoft Azure Data Center. So we are interested to deploy Apache Uzi on top of this Hadoop cluster. So let's get started. So in order to install Apache Uzi, we need to take care of some of the basic prerequisites. First of all, if we plan to install Uzi 4.0.1 or prior versions of JDK 1.6 is required, or if the JDK edition on Ubuntu is greater than or equal to 1.7, then um, we need to make some changes in the project object model .xml file of Maven in Uzi. Otherwise, um, if we plan to install the latest edition of Uzi, that's 4.1.0 or later. So in that case, JDK 1.7 is fine. So for this demo, we would be deploying Uzi version 4.1.0. So that's why we have already deployed in this VM. That's the JDK edition 1.7, and that's fine. And also, we need to take care of this uh, MapReduce job history server that needs to be also configured and started successfully and remaining Hadoop and Yarn demos that should be also running fine. And uh, Hadoop should be also must be running state so that HDFS MapReduce Yarn services that should be running fine. And uh, in this uh, VM, we have already deployed Hadoop edition 2.6.0, which is compatible with the version of Uzi, that's 4.1.0. So whenever you are deploying Uzi on Hadoop cluster, make sure that the installed version of Hadoop is being compatible with the installed edition of Uzi. So then first go ahead with the steps. So first of all, you need to create an Uzi installation directory under the preferred location. So since I am in the cloud VM, so let me get started on this. So first of all, I'm interested to create an Uzi installation directory under the preferred location. So most preferably we used to do this in this user local Uzi directory or just to make to, to provide the full permissions and download the Uzi source code into that folder. So what I'm trying to do is basically let me move ahead with the user local directory and under the user local directory, let me create um, a specific directory for Uzi. And once I've created the directory, don't forget to give the permission. to the newly created Uzi directory. And after that, just go ahead, move inside the directory and start downloading the Uzi source code from the nearest Apache emitter. So uzi 4.1.0.tar.gz would be the respective package which I'm going to download here. And last, make sure that just available this command it's star hyphen zx and once you have done you'd be able to see the source code has been downloaded it's 4.1.0 and after that just make sure to run this following command this bin slash make distro dot shell D skip test then D hyphen D Hadoop version uh, for this demo it's two dot six dot O. If you are getting such types of error, make sure that MVN, if it is not installed in the VM, so make sure that uh, before performing this operation, MVN or Maven has been installed. So what you can do is basically you can go ahead and install Maven. If you are working on a fresh cluster and if you have already deployed Java and Hadoop, 
So make sure that you have Mavenel also having deployed. All right, so Maven is being installed. So let's go ahead with the Uzi building operation. So just type bin slash mkdistro.shell tests the Hadoop version equals two dot six dot o so it would go ahead and build the uzi and uh, it would also build out the standard uzi libraries So once this build would be completed, the next step would be to copy those binary distributions from user local Uzi uh, that distro slash target Uzi folder that's uh, to the, our convenient location so that we need oh, we don't need to traverse a longer directory structure to access Uzi. So what you need to do is again we need to create a directory for Uzi bin and uh, we need to copy out uh, the several jar files and uh, libraries to the Uzi bin directory and then we need to add this bin directory to the bash RC. So that would be the next step. So let's first complete this step and then we would move ahead to the next step. So the build gets successful. So let's proceed to the next step. So we need to copy the binary distribution from user local Uzi distro target from the distro location to the convenient location so that we need to, uh, there is no need to traverse the longer directory structure to access Uzi. So what you can do next is basically we can now go ahead and create a directory. named Uzi bin and then we should go ahead and perform the respective copy operation. To the Uzi bin and next step we need to add this bin directory of Uzi bin into this uh, bash rc file so what you can do here is basically we can open the bash rc script just at the end of the Hadoop path just can add 
following lines. So that's all we need to write. We need to also export the path and we need to write explicitly and we need to set to the path uzi home slash bin and also need to mention about the path. Once we have done that, we can save and exit and we can apply the settings of bash rc. Next step, we need to configure about the Wuzi web console. So in order to configure the Wuzi web console, we need to extract uh, the .zip directory, the extension js.zip library, which is present in Wuzi distribution. So by default, it will not be available with Wuzi distribution we need to download it explicitly separately from extension js site. And once we have downloaded it, next we can create the library directory under Wuzi binary distribution and we can add the record jars to it. And later we can download the record uh, extension j zip files to it so what you can do next is basically once you are there you can move inside the uzi bin directory once you are there you can make a directory Create the directory. Next, So just copy it and once we have finished the copy operation next step to extract the respective Hadoop libraries associated with Uzi just extract it And once we have finished the extraction, let's go ahead and copy this slash Hadoop Leaps.
in the end just download the extension JS from the respective website we are downloading for this demo extension JS 2.2 Now we are almost ready to deploy and start the Uzi web console, but you need to create the users and groups specific to Uzi. So what you can do is basically um, in order to start the Uzi web console, we need to add uh, some of the lines in the core site XML of Hadoop. So what you can do next is basically let me start a new session for this VM. Here, let me move into Hadoop directory. So, in this Hadoop directory, um, in core site.xml, we need to open. So, let me open the core site.xml and here. In core site.xml, we need to add specifically the two lines under Hadoop Conf directory and Hadoop Home. So here, username should be replaced with the appropriate value, specifically the username for your VM or node. In our, our case, it would be user only. So what you can write basically after the respective property, just could be able to add a new property, just add a new name, and here we need to add a proxy user and here it should be replaced as by the username of this node value could be star in the opening of next property Could enter the name the username could be respectively the username of the cluster and the next value should be replaced with the groups and the value here as well for groups as well the star And finally, you need to close out the property tag. Now, once we have closed out the property tag, now we can start the Uzi from terminal. So, first of all, that make sure that you have prepared the Uzi war file and the setup. So, what you can do basically is you need to go inside. Uzi Home and here
So just type uzi setup.sh prepare war if it is failed any time so make sure that file uh, is present so
If you are getting such types of error that uh, zip command not found, so make sure that you have installed zip. After that, you can restart the operation to prepare the war for OZ. All right. So OZ is ready to be started. The next step what you need to do is to we need to prepare the shared library for HDFS. So in order to start the shared library for HDFS, suppose we have an Uzi workflow that runs a MapReduce solution and uh, we want to specify our own mappers and reducer classes. But how does Uzi know that where to find those two classes? So there are two ways to let Uzi know about mappers and reducer classes or any other additional jars required by our workflow. And the first one is that the first approach is based on the fact that a workflow typically consists of a job.properties file, a workflow.xml, and an optional leaf folder, and perhaps the other files such as a peak scripts. Uzi will take any of the jar file that would put into the leaf folder and automatically add them to the workflow's class path when it is executed. That's the simplest approach. But alternatively, we can use the uzi.leaf path property in our job properties file to specify the additional HDFS directories that can contain the specific job. So the advantages of using the property over the leaf folder discussed above is that in cases where we have many workflows, all of those using the same set of jars. So that's why the shared library behaves very similar to uzi.leaf path, except that it's very specific to our force mentioned actions and their required jar files. So the next step would be to install and use the shared library. So before that, by default, the shared library that could be placed in the home folder of HDFS and who could be able to start the uzi web server, but that's not necessarily the same user as one submitting a job. This property in uzi site.xml that's we need to set the location of the shared library that would be called as uzi.service.workflowappservice.system.leapath which should be the default uh, value ID for user slash uzi user slash share slash lib uh, location or the directory for this node where the username that should be resolved by to the user who started the uzi server hence it would be the default location to install the shared library is user slash user uh, that's uzi user slash share slash lib so in order to enable a workflow to use the we need to use a shared library uh, the shared leap and uh, we, we should simply specify the uzi dot user slash systems dot leap path equals to true in the job properties configuration file and uzi will know that to include the jar in the shared library with this necessary actions in the job so what you do to need to do next is uh, basically in the next step we can just type uzi setup shell share lib create fs localhost 9000 so make sure that your head of services are running when you are doing this operation you are installing uh, the shared library for OZ So it would show up basically once uh, the shared library has been installed successfully, it would be able to show up the destination path for the shared library as user slash uzi user for the specific node uh, slash share slash lib slash the specific particular library directory in HDFS. In the next step, we need to update the two properties as well uh, in uzi site.xml and under uzi configuration directory to set up the shared library correctly. So here basically the uzi con directory value, we need to just specify the first properly. So what you can do basically.
So under Uzi Conf directory, you can start and configure Uzi. So in the Uzi site.xml, need to make some changes. So we need to set up the shared live directory correctly. So just search for the respective property that uzi.service.hadoop access a service. And once you get the Hadoop access a service, So once we get the respective property for uzi.service.hadoop accessor service.hadoop.configuration, make sure that uh, you just give the necessary path for your Hadoop configuration directory. So here to make the directory path. for default Hadoop configuration directory and description would be as it is. Also, in the next property, you'd be able to find the option for the uh, that basically the note for Uzi service workflow app service dot system dot leap path. Here, you need to mention the location. Save and exit. Next step, we need to create the Uzi DB for the Uzi version.
So once the OZTV has been started successfully, the next step is basically to start the OZ service. So we can start the OZ service with this command called OZ shell start. So it would uh, the command would go ahead and start the OZ services. And you could be able to verify the status of Uzi service with this command Uzi admin. Uzi service always runs on the port number 11000. That's 11,000. So make sure that when you're working on VM on cloud node, so the respective port should be open. out the status if it is running system mode as normal so that means our Uzi services has been started successfully so next what you can do is basically you could be able to check the status of the service as from any of the browser which is being checked Uzi services is running successfully. The Uzi web console. So once we get the status message of Uzi services normal, then we could be able to see the Uzi web console in the browser. And here is something we are able to get the Uzi web console to be able to see the workflow jobs, the coordinator jobs, bundle jobs, system information, instrumentation, and to the respective settings. So that's all about the OZI installation. And in the next demo, we will be able to see that uh, how to run examples jobs in OZI and how to execute the coordinators and workflow jobs on OZI. So in this demo, we have completed the, all those necessary steps in order to deploy Apache Uzi as a coordinator and as a workflow scheduler on Hadoop cluster, which is being running on a 64-bit Ubuntu server on Microsoft Azure Linux VM. That's all about the demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.